We're going to begin by reading our objective for our lesson. We're going to read it two times. I will read it the first time, and you can read it with me the second time. I can explain how repeated addition and multiplication are related. I can explain how repeated addition and multiplication are related. So as I said, in this lesson, we are going to be reviewing three different things. The first thing is what arrays are and how they are arranged into rows and columns. The second thing is repeated addition sentences. And last, how repeated addition relates to multiplication. We'll begin by reviewing what an array is. An array is an arrangement of a set of numbers or objects into rows and columns. The picture you see of these black circles is an array. Objects in arrays have to be in equal groups. That means that when we line them up and put them in an array, there are no extra objects left over. Arrays have rows, which are horizontal arrangements of numbers or objects. Rows go side to side in an array. How many rows do you see in this array? Great job. We have two rows in this array. The first one is circled in red, and the second row is right under it. There are four objects in that row. We also have columns in arrays. Columns are vertical arrangements of numbers or objects. These go up and down. How many columns do you see in this array? Great job, there are four, four columns in this array. The first one is circled in red. You can see it's going up and down. Remember, columns go up and down and rows go across, side to side. So now we're gonna practice looking at a couple pictures and deciding if it's an array. This is our first picture and it looks just like the one we just saw. Is this an array? And how do you know if it's an array? Take a minute to think about your answer to this question and either write it down or tell someone at home. Great job. This is an array. And we know because all of the objects are in equal groups and we have no extras left over. Let's do one more for practice. Take a look at this picture. Is this an array? How do you know if it's an array? Take a minute to think about your answer, tell someone at home, or write it down. Great job. This is not an array. You can see that the middle row has an extra circle, so they are not in equal groups. So now that we've talked about rows and columns and practiced identifying arrays, we're gonna talk about how we write repeated addition sentences with our arrays. You can use repeated addition to find out how many objects are in an array. Repeated addition is simply adding equal groups. Remember, equal groups means that every group has the same number of objects. A repeated addition sentence is when you add the same number over and over again. For example, if you look at this repeated addition sentence, it says four plus four equals eight. You can add the rows to write a repeated addition sentence. We know in our first row, we see four objects. In our second row, we also have four objects. So our repeated addition sentence would be four plus four equals eight. You can also write a repeated addition sentence with your columns. Remember, the columns go up and down. You count the objects in the columns and add that number as many times as there are columns. In this array, we see there are four columns and every column has two objects. So we will add the number two four times and have two plus two plus two plus two equals eight. You can see in both the columns and the rows, the answer is always eight.
Now that we've reviewed writing a repeated addition sentence, let's talk about how it relates to multiplication. If you know how to write a repeated addition sentence, you're already doing multiplication. We can use repeated addition sentences to write our multiplication sentences. We're going to use this array as our example for when we are practicing our multiplication sentences. If we add the rows going across side to side, we have four plus four equals eight. We know there are four objects in the first row and four objects in the second row. If we add the columns up and down, we will have two plus two plus two plus two equals eight. We know there are two objects in every column. Let's begin by counting the rows, or doing our multiplication sentence with the rows. So remember, our repeated addition sentence was four plus four. When we're writing a multiplication sentence, we are doing the number of rows times the number of objects in each row to give us our answer. So our first step when we are writing a multiplication sentence is to count the rows. Remember, our rows go side to side. When we count our rows, we can see there are two rows going across. So in our first blank, we are gonna put a two to show the two rows. Our next step is to count the number of objects in each row. So that means you're gonna count every circle in the row. If I count across, I see there are one, two, three, four objects in each row. So now I have a multiplication sentence that says two rows times four objects equals eight. This is the same thing as writing four plus four equals eight, but using multiplication instead. There are two ways to write repeated addition sentences for an array. So there are also two ways to write multiplication sentences. We just practiced with the rows, so now we are going to practice with the columns. We're going to use the same procedure. We'll be doing the number of columns times the number of objects in each column. Our first step is to count the columns. Remember, our columns go up and down. We can see that there are four columns in this array. We can look at the red circles to show those columns. So we're gonna put a number four in the column blank. Our next step was to count the number of objects in each column. We can see that there are two objects in each column. So we're going to put a number two in blank. We are left with a sentence that shows four columns times two objects in each column equals eight. This is the same as writing a repeated addition sentence that says two plus two plus two plus two equals eight. Now it's time for some practice. This is a really challenging concept, so this is a great time for you to practice, share your learning with your teacher, and make sure you ask your teacher if you have any questions or need extra help. The first thing you can do to share your learning is to complete the pages in your week six packet. The second way you can share your learning is to draw an array and write the repeated addition and multiplication sentences that match. Remember, you can go back to this video to help remind you how to write those sentences. The last thing that you can do is practice multiplication with equal groups and arrays on IXL.com. Again, remember that you can always ask your teacher for help if you need it, and we would love to see the great practice you're doing with arrays.